I'm G. Lewis with two shortcuts, this time with the steps to restore your Mac to a factory default. You'll probably never need to follow the steps, but they might come in handy if, for example, you would like to resell or return your Mac to the seller clear of any information or modifications. Also, if you have mistakenly switched the video output mode from NTSC to PAL or vice versa, and now you are getting a blackout screen with a message unsupported resolution or incompatible resolution. Or maybe if you have blocked your Mac interface or some channels with a password you no longer remember. Or let's say you just need to mediate a connection problem either with the HDMI or the Ethernet communication ports. Whatever the needs you may have, here you have the factory default steps. First, make sure there is a clear line of sight between your Mac and the remote control as you follow the steps. Now, disconnect the power cord from the power outlet or from behind the Mac if it's easier for you. And plug it back in while holding down on your Mac remote the button with the three dots and three dashes that is usually above the volume button. Keep holding the button until the various menu pops up. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds and you should see a menu similar to the one on the screen. Any changes you make here will be completely unnecessary at this time as they will be voided after you select the default setting. However, the factory setting will only take effect after you save the changes. Now, navigate to the app settings. Press the navigation key to the right and then press OK. Now, return to the previous menu by pressing the navigation key to the left or by pressing the button with the little house. Now, select exit and save. Now press the navigation key one more time to the right and then press OK to save the changes and to restart the receiver. As soon as the box reset, press and hold the button with the dots and dashes until the virus menu shows again. If you don't do it on time, it may get stuck on TFTP load or DHCP load, which is not a biggie. If it happens, just disconnect your receiver once more from power. Press and hold the button with three dots and three dashes while reconnecting your Mac to power. And when the virus menu pops up, what it says, TV system, select a resolution that is compatible with your TV and more importantly, to be compatible with your global zone. For example, NTSC for countries in North, Central and some South America or Paul for most European countries. You probably won't see a difference between one or the other but be aware, because not all TVs are capable to interact with both signals and choosing the wrong format here could be a cause for a black screen with a resolution not supported message after your Mac is rebooted. If you have any doubts when it says system, select the option auto and in graphic res, select TV system res. You can always change this information later from the inner portal or from the outer menu. Now here on boot mode, make sure to select NAND or NAND2. NAND2 will usually force the latest update available after connecting the receiver to the internet. To finish, navigate to exit and save and press the navigator key to the right. Then click OK to save the changes and to restart the receiver. After rebooting, your Mac may install the software update automatically if it's connected to the internet and only if the auto update option was previously checked. Otherwise, you will have to do it manually as well as the other configuration steps. You can find the how-to with the step-by-step -step Mac configuration in my channel. This is all about factoring defaulting USDV Mac. I hope this information has helped you to solve your problems. If so, please click like and help others by posting your results or suggestions. I would like to hear from you and please, don't forget to subscribe and come back for more here at The Shortcuts or at theshortcuts.com. Goodbye.